in a bizarre way, it's overt to be covert. You know, people won't challenge you if you look like you're supposed to be there. Hi, I'm Adam Ruffle. I'm a security professional here at Cyberfort. I'm a security professional who specialises in social engineering. So can you just give me an idea of the sorts of things you look at when you're going into an organisation? What are the key things you look out for? Primarily, the first thing that we'll look at is we'll go online before we, we even visit the location. We'll look at Google Earth to get an understanding of the ground, how that relates, uh, where there are any coffee shops or restaurants, bars that people who work at their premises may use if there's a designated smoking area. That's clearly obvious. Anywhere that we may be able to glean information or, or, ex, or exploit, um, we'll be looking for. We'll also look to see if there are any subcontractors that we can use as part of a pretext to gain entry, uh, and whether they're registered online, any IDs that staff may be wearing. And we won't just look at um, online social media in relation to the company, but we'll be looking at staff and their families as well to see if we can exploit anything like that. It's of particular interest to us uh, if we could get names of key individuals and their roles in companies which can be easily obtained via LinkedIn because if we can use them to give our cover stories credibility when we actually make an approach to the company. So ID badges, for example, is that something that's easily created by you guys? Is that something that you could use? Certainly, you could easily create a copy of an ID badge. It may not have the RFID capability that a normal badge would do, uh, but that with a, a good cover story or with the help of a third party, you may be able to gain access that way. Uh, it certainly adds to your credibility and something that's quite easily done with little to no expense. And when you, you said about looking at social media platforms and maybe people outside of the organisation, so people's families, what's that going to what's that going to give you? Uh, well, it gives you more of an idea. You may have a member of staff, a senior member of staff, that might be very hot on their social media and be aware of not making, uh, uh, giving anything away. Right. Uh, members of the family might not be governed by the same rules, so you'll be able to obtain vehicle registrations, potentially home addresses. Um, other information uh, such as movements if they're on holiday or not. If somebody's on holiday and I'm aware of that, it shows on my part a level of knowledge about the, the intimate personal life of that individual and I can use that to an advantage if I'm trying to coerce a member of staff to allow me to do something that they wouldn't normally do. So easy easy for you to gain access. You Looking at quite simply, somebody said, oh, I'm going on holiday to Spain next week. So you can then use that to your advantage. Yeah, I can, I can turn up, speak to the office and say, oh, is, uh, is John here? Or is he still on holiday? I'll say, no, he's still away on holiday. I've shown that I've got some intimate knowledge. Well, John's left a parcel on his desk for me. Uh, and if I've managed to build up the appropriate amount of rapport, I may be granted access into their office. Uh, maybe a company, maybe not. And even if I am a company, but I'd still potentially be able to place a device in there. Uh, that could compromise the security of that company. So if somebody's asking you, an organisation is coming to you, um, they're coming to you, for, they've got a, um, let's put a scenario in, they've got a, a thought perhaps that they've got a few, maybe some insider security issues um, and they want to know what it is. Is that something you would do? Can you go in or is, is it more the flaws and the fixes that you're trying to find to those flaws? Every company has a different issue. Uh, some will just be approaching us because they want us to come in and assess them to see what, what standard of the security are in terms of their physical security and the human elements of security and how open to exploitation it is. Um, other companies may have had an issue and this has now sparked an interest that they realise that they've got off lightly and they need to pay them serious attention. Uh, and we'll come in to, to highlight any problems uh, and then address that via training afterwards, hopefully, to ensure that that doesn't continue. So the main things that, I, I suppose it's probably quite difficult to say that there's a list of things that you would look out for, because it's literally everything. Yeah, there's not, a, there's not a specific list, but as I say, in terms of an initial reconnaissance, that's some of the things. Yeah. Um, it's certainly not an exhaustive list, but it's certainly some of the things we'd look at. Also, actually, when we do visit the, the premises, we'll be looking at the security. Are they operating mobile outside of the premises? Are they proactive? Are they sitting there? What the reception staff are like? Uh, are they hostile or friendly? What the general atmospherics are of the building? Also, how it responds at different times of the day. If it's really, really busy uh, during rush hour and the security staff are overwhelmed or, or more overwhelmed than they normally would, then that might be an opportunity for us to tailgate in behind a member of staff. Yeah. So we're looking at all, all the, the same things that a hostile element would do um, and coming back uh, to highlight any issues that you have and then providing ways of countering them moving forward. What is the benefit to an organisation 
to have a physical pen test? Effectively, it serves as a health check for your organisation. So you can assess across the board where you are in terms of your security and how vulnerable you are. And it gives you an opportunity to correct those vulnerabilities. If you don't do it, you'll never truly know if you're operating at full capacity and you're, you're doing everything you can do to prevent this sort of exploitation. And given the damaging effect of a quite low level social engineering attack, um, it's certainly in your interest to, to understand what the full potential of one is and learn from that and learn how to counter it and minimise uh, issues going forward in, in the future. You hear often sometimes um, within the security industry, the cybersecurity industry, the, the physical security industry, you'll, you'll speak to people and they'll say, but our security is fantastic. We've never had any incidents. Well, it, their security might be fantastic, but then if I could gain access via the, um, the rear entrance, via, via a, a, a fire exit, which is being utilised by smokers, um, then it's compromised all of that. You can spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on the best cybersecurity systems and the best physical security measures in the world and employ the very best security personnel. But if I can exploit another element of your business in order to gain access, if I can gain access to the, the, the dustbins, for example, and, and go through and look through for any technology that's been left in there, because I've come in under the guise of working under a pretext of working as uh, an individual who, who should be doing that with what de seemed to be appropriate ID, um, then all that goes out the window. Uh, so it's, it's just an opportunity to have a health check for your business, to know where you are and to counter any issues. You can turn up to an organisation with a high vis jacket and a hard hat and a clipboard and you'll likely be more often than not, perhaps be let in. I suppose that's probably something that you've done in the past, probably is something you utilise all the time. In a bizarre way, it's overt to be covert. You know, people won't challenge you if you look like you're supposed to be there. Uh, and if you're walking with purpose in a, in a high vis jacket, you know, I think we're all guilty of turning a blind eye and saying, well, that individual's obviously doing something and they're off doing it. You won't necessarily look to challenge them if they're not wearing the appropriate ID. But security culture is something that has to be installed in all staff and we all have to be responsible for it can't be a situation which is quite common where people look to the security team members and it's their responsibility and nothing to do with you if people do access and gain access to buildings and information um, then potentially as we've discussed before the the, the effects can be absolutely catastrophic and devastating for yeah. business the brand damage would be unrecoverable really yeah, and also potential loss of intellectual property um, and compromise in other areas. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been an interesting insight, certainly for, for me, learning more about it, and I think hopefully for other organisations, uh, give you a bit of food for thought. Um, I think definitely worthwhile looking into. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.